One of the most important things that you will give or receive as a creative is feedback. You need it to make your designs better, to actually solve problems and to challenge your preconceived notions. But here's the rub of it. Feedback is really hard to give and feedback is really hard to receive. So in today's video, I'm gonna share with you some of my favorite tips for offering really constructive and effective design feedback. This video is sponsored by Clap, which is a video collaboration tool and it makes design feedback mwah, absolutely amazing. I'll tell you a little bit more about Clap later on in the video. Giving design feedback is a really hard thing to do. And the tendency that the majority of us have when we see a piece of work and we're supposed to give feedback is to immediately diagnose and give solutions and give advice. But that is the wrong way to go about things because the first thing we should be offering are diagnostic questions. So that's the first tip of the day is to ask diagnostic questions. If I'm taking a look at a piece of work here, I might see these two different styles of box here and I might immediately say, well, the one on the left is better because of, or the one on the left works better and I think you should. We're offering all of this advice, but instead I need to stop and ask those diagnostic questions like, what would our users think of the design on the left versus the design on the right? If we use the design on the right, could we still use a call to action button like the one on the left? How does this play with the rest of the design to the left, right, and in proximity of it? These are diagnostic questions that will stir up a lot of conversation, bring tons of value and nine times out of 10, it's gonna answer the question itself. The next tip for giving design feedback is to be specific. Don't be general, don't give big, vague, generalistic statements or gut feelings but instead drill down and try to be as specific as you can whenever you give feedback. So looking at this design, in my gut, I might feel like something is wrong with the content area. But for me to just say something's wrong with the content area, you should go fix it, is not helpful. Instead, I should give more specific feedback. What's wrong with the content area? I might have to do a little self-assessment and realize that the button here stands out a little bit more than here. Do we really need both of these call to actions? What does it look like if we don't? See how we're kind of falling back to those diagnostic questions? But in doing so, we're being more specific that's good design feedback. Tip number three is to show examples. Be really specific and show examples of exactly what you're talking about. So it's not helpful for me to just generalistically talk about sidebars or talk about call to action issues. It makes a lot more sense for me to show these examples. What would be even better is if we used a tool like Clap, which is our video collaboration tool of choice around here, to actually add a little bit of this context, show these examples and be really specific. Because I have the Chrome extension installed, all I have to do is roll over in my browser and record a clap. Now this is going to look really similar to other asynchronous communication tools you might have used or heard of, but there's so much more going on here that allows me to give this positive design feedback. I can add a name to this, for instance, like a call to action CTAs. I can add it to my already set up organization and structure inside of clap, for instance, like design reviews. And then I choose my camera, my microphone, and I immediately just start recording. I'm going to choose my entire screen and boom, we get a countdown and now we can give that specific feedback. For instance, we might say something like, this call to action is drawing my eye and this one is not. Let's try to make all call to action buttons really drill down and use our main CTA color. Let's do that. And now we just stop and we save. It's gonna immediately open up or clap, and this is a continuation of this idea of being more specific and showing examples, I can actually scrub through my video here and with the comment tool turned on by just pressing C or hitting comment here, I can drill down and highlight an area and I can actually even insert something like a poll, right? So we say CTAs uh, always colored blue, question mark, and let's fix that word colored and we just say yes or no have other variables. Good, we can post this and we can each even mention somebody here. Like for instance, uh, let's uh, mention our friend Daniel who's on our design team and upload that poll. And now we can vote on it and have other people vote on it as well. But now we're drilling down and being really specific. You can see at the bottom when I share this clap with other people, I'm gonna, people will be able to see my comment right there, uh, like on the video, they get the context. It's very, very specific. I'm asking those diagnostic questions and I am showing examples. The next tip to giving really good design feedback is to say we 
and not you. And so when we talk about decisions that we have made as a team, that doesn't isolate you into feeling like you have done something bad. And so if you're part of a design team, if you're part of a group of other people that are working together, my goal is to help us is to help we do a great job on the product. And so by singling people out and using the language of you, 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 it can really make people feel isolated and attacked. Instead, if we use we, us, the team, this would be better for us. We can do it. It's going to bring a lot more encouragement, positivity, and it's going to make the product better overall. So start using the terms we and us instead of you and your. The next tip is to consolidate as much of the similar feedback into one comment or one brief. For instance, if I'm inside of Clap and I see a lot of issues with call to actions, I wanna group that into one area or one conversation. So what's really cool about Clap is I can name this piece of feedback, this video, all about the CTAs, and then I can just hyper-focus, right? I can comment a little bit and maybe zoom forward a little bit on my timeline, and I can just highlight this, and we can talk about uh, the CTA concerns here, and I can post that, and I can also zoom forward a little bit more talking about the CTAs here, and then I can zoom forward a little bit more and talk about the CTAs that are happening there. What's really great is I've kind of grouped everything together so we can talk about all the call to actions across the project, but we're consolidating that conversation around that one topic, that one area of concern, all within one kind of conversation piece. So it's really powerful inside Clap, but just in general to kind of bucket or group together your conversations and tie them all together. That way it starts to stitch together this narrative, this story about this individual piece of feedback, and we can really start a conversation and grow on that individual item. The last tip for offering good design feedback is to make sure that your feedback is well thought out and organized. Don't just be shooting from the hip. Take a little bit of time, think through it, do all those other things we talked about, be detailed, ask the diagnostic questions, but then also organize your feedback. And I think Clap does a really good job at organizing feedback. We can see over here in my Clap dashboard, I've actually organized my workspace. I've starred some topics. I've built different teams, for instance, like my design team and my development teams. Development might have bug reports inside and that's where some of those are gonna happen. My design reviews are gonna happen inside here. You can organize this however you want, but at the end of the day, the ability to organize all of your feedback into groupings and then walk through those and resolve those comments and after you're done, you can close those channels down and open up new channels. And so the power of being able to invite people using something like Clap into one design feedback space work in that space, work in those topics, organize things well, comment inside of each of those threads and then maintain and manage them is so important. So a tool like Clap can actually become kind of your project management, your communication kind of workspace and area and the way that you resolve all design feedback. It's kind of all of those things and more. And so I would definitely encourage you to check out Clap because I'm really, really enjoying it. It's saving me tons of time. I don't have to do as many meetings. I bring a lot of context and clarity to all of my feedback and I'm able to organize my teams, my projects, my threads, my different areas of concern all within one workspace. It's a super powerful tool. It allows me to offer really good design feedback in all of the ways that we've talked about in this video. So definitely check the link down in the description and try out Clap for yourself. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I do lots of videos about design and development and tips and tricks just like this one. So make sure you ring that bell and stick around for the next video. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comments and check the description for that link to clap. I hope you're having an amazing week. I hope you're designing amazing things, making amazing things, and giving really constructive and effective feedback. I'll see you in the next one.